I'm James Just, and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is Tanya Collins, a, a, student, a student's rights activist, a child rights activist, and we have Jason Quintero, the chair out of Solano County. So, Tanya, mandatory school times. Governor Newsom has signed a bill that it mandates later school times for high school students and elementary school students. Is that a good idea done the wrong way? Yeah, I think so, um, because just mandating something in general is just uh, makes my skin crawl, I guess. Uh, but um, yeah, there, there was definitely a different way he could have approached that, uh, but he didn't, like always. Yeah. So. Like always. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, Jason, what's your thoughts on this as a parent? So you've got kids in school? Right. Well? Yeah. And uh, in where I live in Vacaville, they have pushed the school times back. And I like it. But I, I saw some of the science on this. I saw some of the science that said children perform better. They learn better at later times. Mm -hmm. So if the science supports it, I mean, I have to support that. Whatever is best for the kids. Now, I do understand that some parents are upset because they have to get to work. What do they do with the kids? So some extra hour, things like that. I understand it's an extra burden. But the overall fact is it's better for the children. Now, for the governor to be heavy-handed and say, right. this is how it's going to be for everyone in California, all communities, no matter how different it is. I think that's a little, I don't know. Yeah. Thanks, comrade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> uh, you tell the whole state, this is what you're going to do. I prefer it to be as local as possible. But overall, I do like it. Yeah. It's not the way it was yeah. done. Well, I've, I, I've one who's raised, I'm sorry, I'm no, no, go ahead. No, I, I've raised four kids, you know, and some of them are morning people, and some of them are night owls. Like, I have one son who would, if he had night high school, he would have been great. He actually <laughs> might have gone through it. You know, it's just yeah. so, uh, some flexibility in start times is great. I'm just always suspicious whenever we get centrally mandates. You know, if right. individual schools want to make the decisions, or even maybe individual school districts. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like a more appropriate. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that was the way to go, not mandating something. No. Right. That's why we have school boards, right? Right. We have superintendents. We have a bunch of administrators in all the schools. Right. And it takes a governor to tell everybody what to do. can we just all be adults and talk about it and get things done, you know? Right. Be adults yeah. and run no. your life. I, I mean, I agree. Like, 7.30 is, you know, a little bit early to be starting school. Kids are just waking up, haven't even had breakfast. You know, they're rushing out the door. You know, eight eight thirty. That's a that's a proper time. Yeah. Then oh, I, as a parent, has to get up earlier too. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Well, I, I know. Like, actually, I like my <laughs> I, sleep. I like sleeping. In. You know, I work from home, so <laughs> give me a no. I work. Thank from you. Home as well. <laughs> Some of us work overnight hours and don't go to bed till six thirty oh, in the morning. Yeah. Oh, so and, you're that guy. Yeah. yeah, I'm that guy. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, there's well, this flexibility. I think in this education is maybe it's more important than even just the starting time. Maybe it exposes that you know, instead of this hardcore mandate we need night schools for some high school students you know maybe they would actually be students and go to school maybe our could help with our dropout rate because maybe our student some students are just in the wrong environment right and because you know i've got you know five kids and each one needed a different learning environment you know not one of them could have been raised this same way i would have been doing a disservice to all of them exactly. and so our, if, our, if that's the case then the education system shouldn't it be catered to each individual student not catered not make our students cater to the system. Right. Well, I'm just shocked when, when you said you have five children and you work overnight. So you're a freaking angel. Thank you. That's <laughs> hard, hard work, man. But yeah, if we can cater, if let the adults, the parents, the adults cater and have uh, their own schedules, uh, that'd be optimal. Right. Well, and then and then if your child is a night person, um, then you know homeschool would be a great option. Because not all teachers are going to want to, you know, open up the classroom late at night. You know, I don't know how how would we be able to do the morning shift and then the night shift? You know, and for certain kids, and is it really safe when it comes to being dark? You know, and they're at school. I don't know. There's just like a lot of um, things that I think about as a parent. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want my child going to a night school like that. Well, you know, especially if they were in elementary and middle school and things like that. But, um, you know, if your child learns better at nighttime, homeschool would be perfect. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But, you know, to mandate something like this is just, well, to so, mandate anything. Yeah. Pretty heavy handed from the a, top down. Yeah. yeah. And could you shift maybe from after school programs to before school programs to help with some of those students, those, those parents who have morning issues? 
You know, if you're starting school later, you don't need so many after, after school programs, so maybe you just shift those to before school programs instead. Right, mm -hmm. if they can afford it, if the cities and counties can afford these programs before and after school. Right. Yeah. You know, well, right. another, that's another problem. Yeah, well, that's another problem. Yeah. It's next week's episode. Yeah. <laughs> right. We'll be back. <laughs> Yeah, that's a continuing problem about, <laughs> well, why don't we just go right into about, you know, taxes being stolen. Gas taxes. Oh. Governor Newsom has signed an executive, um, some kind of executive action where we're going to take our gas taxes that they promised they wouldn't steal this time and use them for, for uh, roads. not roads, for... <laughs> <laughs> to, public line, to line someone's pockets? Public yeah, yeah. Well, that is what's going to end up happening. Yeah. Public transportation, bicycles, and, and those and those type of projects. <sighs> <laughs> now you're making me mad by talking about this, James. <laughs> now I'm getting pissed. Uh, no, this has been going on for decades. I mean, I'm just turned 50, but I've been I've been hearing about this stuff for decades. About the, we need more money for roads. We need more money for the children. We need tax, 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 and every time it doesn't go to where it belongs. Right. Every single time. That's frustrating. And, and so I, I want to look at the adults and the parents in the room, or just the adults in the room, and say. You're getting screwed every single time they want to raise your taxes. They, they say it's going to the roads or the children. They're lying. Period. Mm -hmm. They're lying about it. Right. Right. It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Because you, you're voting on this person to do what they say they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they take that your, your tax, your hard-earned tax dollars, and divert it to something else. And they're like, oh, sorry, we're going to pay for this now. No, no, no. We're not going to pay for that. We're going to pay for this now. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and our roads are, you know, our whole infrastructure structure is, you know, deteriorating. We have, you know, potholes everywhere. People are um, planting trees in these potholes. It's actually kind of comical, right. but you know what I mean? Yes. Like they're doing these sort of things to be like, hey, city, what are you going to do about this? Nothing. It's been, you know, day 120 and they still haven't done anything, you know? So, you know. All, all of these, the tax, the gas tax from years ago was supposed to take care of, you know, mm -hmm. all of these things. And mm -mm, no. Why did I do it? Well, no. I drive 40,000 miles a year. And so I'm paying a lot of money in gas tax. And I'm also have been forced to drive on these roads with potholes and, and all kinds of various problems where they keep manipulating and changing the roads. You removing commuter roads to make them non-commuter roads, which forces you on to other and makes traffic worse. So, you know, I'm being forced to pay for all these various programs to, to manipulate my life. And yeah, right. that I'm against, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not against making, you know, bicycles easy to ride for bicycles or to help for public transportation. But most of that money actually gets spent on consultants and various things. Very few actual bicycle lanes get built. Right, or their mm -hmm. CEOs. Yeah, or they're built Bonuses. in the wrong spaces. Or... Yeah, yeah. So it just becomes a, a question of this, how big the government has become and how much, how much things we're actually asking them to do that we can no longer actually follow the money. Can the average citizen actually follow what is going on? Is it even possible? No, no, they can't. But the only thing they can do is stop voting for the same people, the same party, over and over and over again in California. You see what's happening. We see it. Right. So wake up. Mm -hmm. Do something about it and vote different. Yeah. Well, while we're on gas, let's talk about some uh, gas problems. Uh, Cal our gas prices are high as usual. We had a refinery fire, uh, what, a couple of weeks or two ago, and which doesn't help. So mm -hmm. what is the solution to California's high gas prices? Does <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> About 20 minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> I will get nowhere in 20 minutes because I really don't know, James. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I don't work in the industry. I'm not, um, I'm not Joe Biden's son. I don't work in the energy industry, so it's hard for me to know. <laughs> well, and then we're uh, close to refineries. How the heck is another state paying cheaper gas when they're getting gas from the same refineries? And we were just in Napa last weekend, and gas was, I think it was close to like $5 a gallon. I mean, they're the closest to Richmond and, and all those refineries. Why is it $5 a gallon? I don't get that. You know, when other states that we ship it to are paying $2.50 a gallon. How is that 
fair. And it's there's uh, don't get me wrong, they have different gas tax than we do, you know, yeah. in other in other states. But come on, for Gavin to be Newsom to be like, oh well, I'm mad now because our gas has gone up. <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> I mean, you're you're part of the problem. Right. I love his fake outrage. Yes, yes, his fist in the yes, yes. I'm yes. so mad about this. I'm so this. mad about this. Although yeah. I know I'm the problem. Yeah, I'm when, really uh, upset when about us it. as taxpayers are paying his gas. Right, right. He's to pissed, to and for, Yeah, but he's, yeah. Good he's thing upset. he's angry. He's like fighting yeah. for us, right? Oh, well, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, California. let's vote for him again. Make him president, maybe. Let's oh, do no. it. No. Well, we do have a couple of problems. <laughs> California does have a unique gas, so we can't actually import gas from other states. We can't import gas from Texas. We can't and import gas, you know, when we have a refinery problem, and it just we can't we can't even they won't even go. Oh, it's an emergency. We'll sign a waiver. We can import gas for a month. They won't even do that. So when we have a when we have some kind of problems, it spikes our gas because we can't bring some out. But also, we're also the only state in the in the country that actually still gets our gas from Saudi Arabia. I didn't know that. The, the rest of the United States is, is we're internally functioning, they're internally self-sufficient. The United States now actually produces enough oil to where we actually don't need to import any. But because California has this unique gas, we still get our gas from Saudi, we actually import refined gas from Saudi Arabia. Well, maybe wow. we should send some more troops to Saudi Arabia to protect that gas, right? <laughs> I'm kidding, please, no. understand I'm joking, no. right? <laughs> um, a I didn't great know that joke, changed. though. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, it just sounds silly. I mean, people are in charge. There are adults in the room who decided we can't get gas from Texas. We have to get from Saudi Arabia. That's just insane. Yeah, well, because Texas, in Texas, re well, the Texas refineries only want don't want to refine California gas because they can just sell it to okay. Michigan or, right, or we Arizona. Have yeah, well, we have special gas because we have special gas, right. and so why are they going to re? You know, we can just sell it. Make more money by selling it to Arizona or, or Texas or Oklahoma or well, wherever because, you want. Well, are you talking about because mm -hmm. they put additives in it? Yeah, it's a special, it's a special environmental friendly blend. Because we should just, you know, have a warehouse, <laughs> have Texas ship it to that warehouse, and then we will manipulate the gas how we see fit Maybe that's in California. It. Yeah. But the trucks can't travel down our roads because they're too dangerous, probably. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. There's always something. Across the border, they crash. So we don't want that. <laughs> Texas doesn't want that. Yeah. And, well, and what disturbs me is even in this case we have a refinery fire, they won't even like put a waiver so we can import some gas for a month while the refinery fire was being dealt with. So, they, so these spikes won't even be dealt. You know, okay. Oh, you are, I get it. You want to have some special gas to help the environment. Okay, fine. But when we have a problem with a, a, a distribution, distribution problem, I can speak. Um, we, <laughs> that that you know we can waive it and we can import some gas for a little while while you know so all of us aren't suffering. Yet California has all these refineries that are, you know, having yeah. problems and. Yeah. Well, we only have we actually only have a couple refineries oh, and in California and so San Martinez. When, yeah. So Richmond. when some has a problem, we actually get to, it's a big just it's a big problem in our distribution, and we just don't, as. Average citizen, we don't know. We don't know anything about distribution of gas. Why should we? You know, we just want to go to the gas station and fill up. You know, none of us want to care about the logistics of gas. Right. You know, right. you know, we want to care about the logistics of our dinner. Well, we live our life exactly. We have our lives. We have our five children to raise. We're, we're busy people. Well, my children are raised. I've got the grandson in the house oh, now. Oh. So okay, you're actually okay. You're still busy. <laughs> so, well, speaking about raising weights, Target. Raise their wage, minimum wages of their workers, and now their workers are worse off. Some of their workers are complaining because they're worse off. They used to get full-time hours, so now they're actually making less money than they were before. Who didn't see that coming? <laughs> <laughs> you raise well, them I mean, Target, it's a pretty big company. They should pay their employees, I feel, you know, a living wage. You know, because back in the days, you only had one person working in the home. Yeah. And... You know, the other one stayed home with the kids and was the homemaker and all that kind of stuff. But now these days, you know, these parents and, or, you know, everybody is working two or three jobs. And that's a shame. And, you know, there's no time for the kids. There's no time for dinner. You're like, oh, I'm going to go to McDonald's. Oh, sorry. Um, you know, go, I don't know if I'm supposed that's to say okay. it, but. <laughs> yeah, oh, you $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, you know, just everything's like a rush, rush, rush. People, you know, as soon as they get off their regular job, they're like, okay, well, I've got to go to do Uber. I've got to go do this. You know, so, uh, you know, it was nice that Target decided that they would like to increase the wages, but at least that make for sure that they were getting 40 hours a week. You know, don't 
you know, take away their hours to pu- try to punish them or try to, I don't, I don't even know. Like, well, there's, you... well, there's only so much money you can have for labor. And so you're, if your labor costs, you, know, you only have so much income, so you only have so much money you can put out. So there's only so much money for labor costs. And yeah, but yet the CEOs and everything and the, and the board members are making a ton of money, you know. Exactly. But, so. is, but is the problem the wages or is the problem actually the cost of living? You know, we've got housing costs. If housing costs are eating, you know, two thousand dollars a month. Right, but that I don't see that disappearing. Yeah, but what, yeah, yeah. But is that the responsibility you know, of so Target, like, or is that the responsibility of those of us who have, in, you know, influenced policy to make housing costs? Oh no, I'm not saying it's the responsibility of Target. No, I get that. But for the employees, at least yeah. you know, pay them a decent wage and give them the hours that they need to survive, you know, I, and I'm not saying, you know, live in a mansion. I'm just saying, you know, be able to afford food for your kids, you know, right. clothe them, things like that. I don't know. I'm just, that's, that's the softy in me. Yeah. That's nice though. <laughs> <laughs> you have a softy, right? <laughs> well, I want to know why Target raised the, the uh, wages. I wonder why they did that. Did they do it so that they could backhandedly not pay as much yeah, in an awesome sort of way? Or was it virtue signaling to make people feel good about Target? I don't know what it was. Yeah, what was the story behind it? Yeah, what's the story? Why did well, they do it? Well, the, the real mean, story, the, the story said, the, their, their story was they wanted to help their employees and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we kind of guessed at the time, a lot of us guessed at the time it was more virtue signaling because we know that Target only has so much income and you can only put certain percentage goes towards labor costs and that percentage really doesn't change because Target only has, per store, only has like a 2% profit margin. Hmm. And so, you know, there's only so much you can do on a per store basis. If your store only makes so much money and you, 35% of it or whatever goes to labor costs, you only have 35% to labor costs. And so that's why I always wonder is if we're going, if our problems we should focus on is cost of living rather than raising wages. Because if all we do is raise wages, stuff's still just gonna go up. I, I, my son is now a stay-at-home parent. His his spouse type person has gotten a job out at the airport, which is a good union job and all. Right. And so, mm-hmm. you know, she's making sandwiches and food at service at the airport. But so now he's staying at home because we have he has the opportunity to have essentially no housing costs. Oh wow! Right, because he stays fantastic. with me, so they have no housing oh, costs. Perfect. Can <laughs> right? we move into so? <laughs> Oh, no, my house is full. <laughs> <laughs> so, but because of that, he gets the opportunity to stay home with his son during his first couple of years. That's very nice. You know, and it's for me, it's always important. It doesn't matter which parent is home. Mm-hmm. You know, if one parent is home with a child, right. that is what's best for the family. It doesn't really matter which one it is. If the if the mother can make more money, and it's, if that's the way they want to do it, then great. Mm-hmm. If the man wants to stay at home and it's great. We should encourage that. Mm-hmm. And we should encourage families to take care of each other. So that's okay. kind of why I kind of sit on this whole thing is we, we focus on wages rather than focusing on maybe maybe this whole two-parent, uh, two-worker income family. Maybe it's been a false a false god type of speak. You know, we've wanted to raise money, raise money, but right. but maybe, you know, maybe the life was a simpler life was better where, you know, we didn't have so much money, but we did have quality family time. Right, right. I agree. And I, I, I know that I live that way and my wife and I don't make a lot of money, but we are home. One of us is always home, usually to take this, uh, our son or daughter just to school or pick them up from school. That's an amazing way to live. I know people who are making lots and lots of money, but they work all the time. And God, God bless them. If that's what they want to do, please go for it. I don't hate them or nothing, but I really enjoy making less money, but spend more time with my family. Right, individual right. choice. You know, make that choice. Right. So when I, uh, so I'm full on uh, more in mortgage, um, but when I um, got my real estate license, I was like, wait a second. So now I have to do my mortgage job during the day and then do my real estate job at nighttime. And I'm like, I will have no time to spend with my family. Dinners, no. You know, no. and on the weekends, I love to take my daughter to go to events. They have free events all around town. If you guys ever want to take your kids, please go, because mm-hmm. they're amazing. They have events at the Sierra uh, College Museum there, and it's the first Saturday of the month, and they have a different, it's a different theme each time. You get to dissect things, and kids just love it. So anyways, you know, if I worked all the time, I wouldn't be able to 
you know, take her to those right. fun places. So I have to put some things on the back burner, you know, with my work and stuff. I have to put it on the back burner because she's, you know, my daughter's my number one priority. My son is too, but he lives down south. But, you know. <laughs> you always have to have a favorite, right? <laughs> no, I, no, Sorry, kids. You know, he'll call me. He's, he's going to be 23 next month. So, you know, he's an adult. But, um, yeah, so she's, you know, my number one. And, and, and I love those. I cherish those times with her. And, and parents should be able to do that, like you said. Mm -hmm. You know, my husband's very flexible with his job. So he can work at home anytime he wants to. I work from home directly. So, you know, somebody's picking her up, dropping her off. I get her ready for school, packing her lunch. You know what I mean? Just spending quality time with her. Yeah. And, it, and a lot of people don't get that. And it's really sad because they're working so many jobs out there. Right. And I don't want to come off as insensitive where it's like, oh, you can either just work or you just stay home. I don't want to come off that way because I know a lot of people don't have a choice. I know a lot of people right. are just working their butts off and barely getting by. And they wish they could spend more time with their children. So I don't want to seem like... No, there, there's been right. times in my life. You figure it out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. There's times yeah. in my life where I had to work three jobs so my so my kid's mother could stay at home. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, of course, I eventually kind of almost killed myself doing that. And so you have to kind of you know, look at something different. But I'm lucky. My family has kind of looked after me. I have that family safety net I, tech, I talk about is, you know, it's because I have that. And mm -hmm. so when I look out and I see it, the, you know, my community, so many people who don't have that, or that we don't honor that right. is essentially what yeah. we don't do. We don't right. even honor that anymore. Right, no, I didn't have it. I was a single mom for so many years, for 15 years raising my son, and I didn't have barely any help. And I was working, you know, three jobs. I would do my mortgage job during mm -hmm. the day, and at nighttime I would cater, and cater like five jobs, you know, a week. And just to be able to afford, you know, a nice place for my son, you know, his own room and all of that kind of stuff. So. You know, it's hard. It's re it was it was really hard, um, but I I feel bad for the parents that don't have you know that have to go through that as well. Right. You know, being a single parent and not getting you know uh, child support or any help at all. You know, I I luckily I had child support and my son's father was in his life, so that was a good thing for me. Uh -huh. But still, I had to you know work hard to get you know put my son in a good school. You know, in Walnut Creek, and I, we lived in a safe neighborhood. I worked hard for that. Right. Um, you earned it. I you did. For it. Yeah. Well, and speaking yeah. of making parents work hard, you know, out of Sacramento, there's a, been a growing scope of a laundry a avalanche, essentially, you could argue, that of laws and bills that have been passed and signed recently. You know, so what is the impact of this growing scope of government? Where Governor Newsom and the legislature have been passing all kinds of laws that regulate more and more details of our daily lives. Um, it, it's scary. And what scares me the most is that uh, we continue to vote for the same thing over and over and over again. We're just voting our rights and our freedoms away. I, it just kills me inside. I don't understand why people are voluntarily giving their control and their lives over to politicians who are good at marketing themselves. I, I think we just that's what I stand on. I'm I think we'd be better off without them, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just to go occupy the Capitol and like, sorry, we're kicking you out. <laughs> Please stop making laws. Please, yes. Please. Yes. Please. You know, we don't want to. Take an 11-month vacation. Mm -hmm. I'll let you work for a month. I'll let you screw it up for one month. <laughs> for the other 11 months, just go home and stop. We'll give you all your money, but just stop and make our lives better. Right. Yeah. Yeah, right. well, at what point is enough is enough? You know, with straws and plastic bags, oh. we, we always kind of laugh at is, is the goofy examples, but it, it goes on. They've got, now they have, you know, abortion pills mandated at all the colleges. colleges. Now, I don't have any problems with giving out abortion pills, but why is it a mandate? It's, right. You know, yeah. it's, it's all these kinds of, you know, there's issues of, of the centralized control is we see the failures of the centralized control, whether it's gas tax problems not going where they want, whether it's, you know, minimum wages kind of counteracting what their intentions mm -hmm. were, this whole kind of school start time. We kind of, the whole discussion today right. has kind of gone. Or where the Uber and the Lyft. The Uber and the Lyft. Right. Where, where these regulations and restrictions on our daily lives have actually done the exact opposite of what we've actually intended them to do. Right. They're, right. they're completely counter counterbacking we've got a couple minutes left so but here in Sacramento and San Francisco drivers have been deemed some of the worst in the country 
I have to agree to that. Yeah. I think all of Northern California is just <laughs> they're horrible drivers. I don't know why they're horrible. Though. I can't blame that one on Gavin Newsom yeah. or Donald <laughs> yeah. Trump or no, anybody. I, just saw, I think that's just. I just saw a motorcycle Sorry. guy today, you know, on my way here. He's, you know, I'm about ready to merge, like everybody's merging. And he just out of nowhere comes through and then goes through, like tries it all. Whoa, buddy. Whoa. Yeah. I was going to say, what noise did he make when he dropped Yeah. No, I just, <laughs> ask. Well, it's, it's, part of, uh, it's part of the problem some of the, the engineering they've tried to do. Uh, I know they've changed a lot of traffic calming and the road dieting mm -hmm. and all these, all these kinds of issues, you know, which increases frustration. If you're sitting in traffic here in Sacramento, they say uh, commuters sit in traffic an extra half hour than they were just like two years ago. You know, does that mm -hmm. increase frustration? And does that frustration, you know, you get that to 5% of drivers who don't respond well to frustration. Yeah, and that's and another Talk yes. about me. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a good thing I work from home <laughs> for that purpose. <laughs> well, as again, as someone who drives for a living, and so I see drivers all the time, I actually, you know, I actually, most drivers are actually fairly good if they were, we wouldn't function at all. Mm -hmm. um, mistakes happen, you know, even I do, you know, I try to be very conscious because the one thing I can't do is actually have an accident and, you know, I essentially lose. All right. Yeah, you, you get a, you did an accident, yeah, you lose, you, yeah, I have to change my whole, my whole career. So, you know, it's, it's at my fault. So I have to be essentially, especially vigilant and, and even I make mistakes. And so we have to, that's the difference between a mistake and the social engineering of roads is very difficult in the bad state of roads where we actually had an accident just outside my house. My next door neighbor's car was totaled because someone hit the speed bumps that aren't very well painted. He didn't see oh. them and lost control and then crashed his car into my next door oh, wow. and totaled her car. And he wasn't going very fast because his airbags didn't even go off. So you know he wasn't actually speeding because if he was speeding his airbags were going off, but he didn't see the, the speed bumps mm -hmm. and because the, you know, the sign is covered with a tree and the paint is faded and <laughs> right. So I can't blame a politician. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we can. I'll, we'll find a way to blame a politician around here. <laughs> if we, okay. So we've got what another minute left. Is there anything closing you guys want to say here today? Uh, I'm, having, I'm having a good time. Thank yeah. you for inviting me out. I really appreciate that. Yes. Thank you for That's having it. me as well. Having me back as well. Yeah, well, it's, it's been fun. It's a been fun. It's a been fun trip here today <laughs> through our laughter and our journey and our journey, journey. so thank you for this. all of us here at libertarian counterpoint we want to thank you for watching catch us on public access channel 17 and remember please love everybody